Hi, I'm Kaylee, a librarian here at Metro Public Library. And I'm Meg, also a librarian, and welcome to this week's edition of All Booked Up with Kaylee and Meg, where each time we give you different book recommendations on a specific theme. Today, we're going to be looking at books in translation. So these are books not originally published in English, um, but translated and published here with a translator and the author from a variety of countries. Mm -hmm. So we found that not all great books are in English. So we hope that you enjoy some of these foreign books today. <laughs> yes. And I will say, I mean, we have talked about books that have been translated on here several times before, but today, you know, we're just focusing on that. And uh, all of the books that we're going to talk about today are available for you here at the library, as well as online through Libby and Hoopla. All right, Keely, what's your first book in translation? Okay, so my first book is called The Survivors by Alex Schulman, and this one was originally published in Swedish in 2020, and it came out here in the U.S. in 2021. It was compared to uh, bestsellers like Atonement and uh, The Dinner, and so that should kind of give you a vibe of what kind of book we're talking about here. Uh, this one's got a little bit of suspense to it, sort of a slow burn kind of thing, too. This is about three adult brothers who return to their summer cottage, a place that they visited frequently every year when they were younger, and they haven't been back in years and years since something very terrible happened there. You know, it's clear right from the get-go that it's traumatic for them to return, but not entirely sure why. Uh, they have only returned now because their mother requested after her passing that her ashes be scattered at this lakeside cottage. Being back in this place is filled with memories for all three of the men. And the book is told from the perspective of the middle, middle brother, uh, Benjamin. And the author does a great job of focusing on all of the different roles that the brothers play in their family and how that affected them growing up and now as adults. This brings up all of these memories being back at the cottage, things about their relationship with their parents, with one another, just memories of being there as kids. And then the terrible thing that happened the last time they were there. And they also wonder, you know, who remembers it accurately? Because everyone sort of remembers this terrible event a different way. So this is a really fast paced read. It's not a very long book, but it's a lot about like the dysfunctional family kind of setting and how that impacted these children and then into their adulthood, but all of these secrets that the family kept and what kind of toll they took on them too. So lots of twists and turns in this quick book. And it is the first book of the authors that's been translated into English uh, and has become an international seller whereas he has written other books. So I think with the popularity of this one compared to such big name other bestsellers, it's likely that there will be more from Alex Schulman. Ooh, sounds good. Yeah, definitely a suspenseful one, but the mix of like a family aspect. Mm -hmm. So kind of like mystery, this is us maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> sounds good. Um, so my next one is slightly suspenseful as well. A kind of a noir thriller called The Thief by Fuminori Nakamura. And this was originally published in Japan and uh, translated by Sakoto Izumo and Stephen Coates in 2012. So this author Nakamura is famous in Japan for writing a bunch of suspenseful novels. 2012, Soho Press began publishing all of his novels. So if you like this one, um, there's many more you could check out as well. And it's about the titular character is just called The Thief. So we don't know his name. And he roams the streets of Tokyo as a very sly pickpocket. So he can just smoothly, without even looking at a person's face, can take their wallet. And he, he kind of operates very quietly. And, you know, it's his little operation that is going fairly well for him. Well, one day things get pretty intense. He gets roped in by a local Tokyo crime boss into stealing from someone that he thinks is just another you know, pickpocketing uh, task. But it turns out that the person he stole from is a very prominent politician, very famous and in the news. And then soon after he steals from him, this politician is murdered. 
So all of a sudden, our thief is implicated in a much bigger situation than he could have ever anticipated. So he gets in a lot of trouble, we should say. Meanwhile, all this is happening. He comes across a young 10-year-old boy um, who gets caught shoplifting. And his heart kind of, you know, softens towards this boy. And he actually is compelled to save this boy from getting arrested. He kind of takes the blame. And this relationship with this little boy that he kind of saves um, leads him to the boy's mother, who he also um, meets. And, you know, as he meets these two characters, his heart kind of softens. And maybe his life of crime days, he's kind of changing his perspective on them. So it's a, it's a fast-paced book. You know, read it with your little black and white sunglasses on because it reminds me of those film noir movies from the 40s <laughs> um, but it's it's really fast paced and if you like mysteries and thrillers it's a good one for you <laughs> that sounds very interesting and I like the fact that there's sort of like some redemption for him as part of this journey yes perhaps absolutely <laughs> all right uh, so my next one is a book that has gotten under the skin of many readers since it came out it has a slow building, quiet kind of horror about it. And this is The Perfect Nanny by Leila Slimani. And this was originally published in French in 2016 and uh, here in the U.S. in 2018. This is a little bit older, but one that had a huge popularity when it first came out. We were discussing that, that I remember having to order additional copies to the library for this title because we had so many holds. So this opens already revealing that something terrible has occurred. Then the author takes you back. So that sort of just right off the bat catches your attention because you already know the ending before the beginning. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because you should read the book. But (laughs) uh, so this is about Miriam and her husband, Paul, who have decided that Miriam's going back to work and they need a nanny to take care of their children. Pretty standard stuff. And they immediately meet Louise, who is the perfect fit. She does everything just right. They could never ask for anyone else. They immediately have a connection with her. She cooks, she cleans, she plays with the children. Things are great. Before they know it, they cannot imagine life without Louise. Uh, She is a part of their family. She's integral to their daily life. But even though things seem perfect, nothing ever really is, right? So there is such a thing as too perfect. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon, Louise's perfect facade seems to crack. But at this point, it is already too late for Miriam and Paul to sort of extricate their family from Louise. She's already so interwoven in their lives that it is impossible for them to separate from her, even as they realize that she is not the person they thought she was. So that's all I'm going to say, because it gets very in-depth here. But this book is really sort of, I've seen it described as like a character study less than a plot, because in a lot of mysteries, you know, it's about, oh, who did this and why? Uh, This is not just who did this and why, but who did this? How did we get to that point? And, you know, the what, like less than the what of the story is already known, like, you know, what is going to happen, but you're learning how we got to this point mm-hmm. and also a little bit of the why we got to this point. And it's one of those books that just is unsettling. That's like the best word for it. It is unsettling, but in the best way, because it gives you those like something is off, something doesn't seem right kind of vibes. And you really have to sort of read between the lines yourself to see what's going on. But it is thoroughly gripping and just a creepy good read. And again, a pretty fast read too. I think it's a shorter book as well. Uh, And so this is the perfect nanny who is not so perfect. Yeah. And I agree with you. The unsettling, most unsettling thing is when it's like someone bright and cheery on the surface, but underneath (laughs) something sinister. That that is for sure the creepiest type of story. So 
I yes. didn't intend to pick two creepy books, by the way. I was just trying to pick different language. Right. Books in translation. Uh, I think that the ones that get translated a lot are these ones that are like mystery and suspense and have yes. different elements than maybe a lot of what the American authors are doing at the time. So I think this one uh, and the previous book I talked about are both ones that like, you know, fit in well with the current trend for these like psychological suspense books, but yeah. with twists. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've kind of all, all three of those so far have been kind of suspenseful. And my last one is actually a little uh, divergent from that. So it's My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. And this was originally published in Italy, and it was translated by Ann Goldstein in 2012. So both of mine were 2012. So this book is the first in what is called a four book series that is called collectively the Neapolitan novels. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of historical uh, fiction. It takes place in over across six decades from the 40s in Naples all the way to like current day. And it's about two friends, Alina, nicknamed Lena, and Lila. And they are kind of foils for each other. Lena is very studious, ambitious. She wants to be a great student. And Lila is more um, mercurial and intellectual. And she just kind of has this irresistible charm about her that draws everyone to her, including Lena. So these two friends, they both love writing and literature, and they're both kind of confronted with a stultifying culture around them or kind of suppressing their ambitions and dreams. But as they go through life, you know, get married, have children and, and things like that, you know, their friendship, you know, changes and evolves. So that's a really fun thing to capture and fascinating to look at across the four novels. And it also, uh, Ferrante, has a cool way of, you know, weaving in and out between the different uh, decades in their life and different events that happen. So I, I really like it for that reason. I love the it Italian setting, Naples. I just think it's such an interesting place in the world to, to read about. It also, it's post-war, so it kind of reflects that time in history for Italy. So it's very interesting. One thing I didn't mention is Elena Ferrante is a pseudonym, so we don't know the author's true name. I mean, there was actually uh, some stories that came out a few years ago, like some Italian journalists were trying to like snoop and really find out the author's identity, even speculating that it was a man and not a woman. And yeah. then many people came out and said, no way, this, is, this can't be. The, the book is written from a woman's perspective. There's no way. So I'll leave it up to you. It's kind of interesting to think about. So <laughs> I did not uh, know that that was a pseudonym. I uh, I... I recall those books as well because they were very popular. And I think all three came out, at least the first three, I guess it would be, all yeah. came out like right around the same time the translation was released at the same time. And they've been incredibly popular. And I think that's a very good one for us to end on too, because like you said, most of our other things were sort of suspenseful. And yeah. I uh, though that book would be a great one to read this summer to sort of dive into because, you know, getting into that friendship and starting off so far back and moving forward in their lives. I think that's a great path to take and something I would like to read in the summer. That's I tried it. once before to read the, this book and not that it's a negative, but it I just wasn't the right time for me to read it. So maybe this summer will be the right time. Yeah. Go to a beach, sit down and just read. I think it sounds like a good beach read, you know, just like relax yeah. and get into the story. So, well, mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this week's edition of All Booked Up. Kaylee and Meg, we hope you are inspired to read these four novels and we hope you have a great week. Yep. And come see us next time. Happy reading. <laughs> Happy reading.